Welcome to the Metal Mixtape here on KHQ 89.5 FM, Ash Oregon, 94.1 FM, Metro Oregon, streaming online on KHQ.org. It's the boy, it's the Todd DJ Remo. It is interview time, it is interview time. We have Tony and Ian from the mighty, the dark, the brutal, the mean, Mother Roth. What's up, guys? What's up, man? How you doing? Yeah. Dude, I am super excited, dude. And I'll tell you the story of how I got into you guys, dude. It's because um you know um i don't know if you guys knew before i met you guys but you know i i throw festivals and stuff i play i play in bands i do radio and all that and and for med for metal fest 3 dude in my head i was like i this was legit my thought process so i already had like half the lineup up and everything and i was like um one of the things we're missing is somebody who's like just really mean and dark but somebody who like stands off on his own because with this festival i like to like bring like a lot of multiple different genres but like but like bands that like uniquely have something that makes them stand off by themselves even if they play similar genres as other bands and i remember uh you know of course one of my best <laughs> friends amy lee carlson from solicitor i i value uh, your opinion so much i value your, you know like anytime i need any metal questions i have like my metal gurus that i talk to around the pacific northwest and i was like and i was like i was like amy I need to see. I need to see a band that's like extremely mean, like a man, a band that's like just pissed off. That that <laughs> a band that's just really gonna drive some pits. Like I need, I need a band that's like a for sure shooing for a mosh pit, you know. And she's like, oh, Maseroth, you know. Oh, yeah. and, and, and before that, dude, I mean, I've I've lived here seven years in Oregon. I still haven't heard of you guys, which is nuts. I've I've listened to so many bands, you know. But it just shows, like, you know, it's just I don't know. I guess just the world's bigger sometimes. I guess, but yeah, it's dude, incredible. Uh, yeah, but Amy uh, shot me you guys over, and I watched your guys' videos on the uh, Bridge City Sessions, and and dude, you guys are you guys are so damn disgusting. And <laughs> way, I just want to say I'm honored to have you guys on the festival, and I'm so stoked, man. And um, we're talking to um, Ian, who plays guitar. I mean, Ian is the singer, and Tony, who plays guitar. That's right. Um, uh, we can start it however you guys want, but um, tell me the whole point of starting Maseroth and also like when you're playing this style of music like I feel like you have to be somewhere not somewhere mentally but you have to be some sort of influence in a pissed off way because yeah. I can't write this stuff <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah you're definitely on to something there man I, I feel so, so like I just want, so, so I want you to tell me like why why this direction in the first place and how you were able to find each other and tell me about Maseroth so Maseroth started in, uh, let's say, I think mid-2008 in Portland, Oregon. Me, um, Tony, Viscera, what have you. Uh, myself and uh, my friend Alejandra, we were jamming in his basement for a while. And one thing led to another. We wrote a couple songs and played some shows for a couple years in Portland, but our, our style never really solidified. And before that could happen, we ended up dispersing and you know forming into other projects and doing other things. And then 2019, I was uh, I was in a couple of local bands here in Portland, and I uh, decided at that time that I was kind of tired of doing other people's projects and wanted to bring something of my own back out. And you know, I couldn't think of anybody else uh, in the scene that had a voice or a gurgle like like Ian uh, Wretch. And um, I knew that if I really wanted to make an impact, I would need to have an equally impactful vocalist and uh, you know, a drummer and bassist. And all of those things kind of came in place over time. I but, feel like a big part of Maseroth yeah. is, is uh, making sure that every part of the band stands out. Um, Definitely. We're, we're not necessarily trying to be the fastest or the hardest to play or anything like that. I do somewhat shoot for the most disgusting. <laughs> but uh hell yeah i would i would say that mostly we're we're creating something that we consider art um it's definitely driven by our interest in the macabre and things that most people shy away from are literally what we're trying to make <laughs> <laughs> the things that recoil or disgust other people are things that we try to embrace um you know, from our stage gimmicks or, you know, whatever it is we're trying to portray through our music. Uh, and I think you touched on it earlier, like, how do you kind of approach that and get into that? Well, 
I don't know, but I, I'll say before I go on to stage, there's definitely a transformation. Um, I become somewhat of a different person in my own mind and with the way I'm interacting with other people up to like a half hour before I step onto stage and sometimes for the rest of the night, you know, so uh, it, you kind of pump yourself up into a ready to fight kind of feeling right before you step out there. So it's an um, energy that uh, you manifest. Yes. Not necessarily something that you just walk around with every day, I guess, but it's definitely uh Maseroth is about being a performance art as well. I mean, you see a lot of really heavy bands and everybody's just standing there with their guitar up next to their neck and, uh, <laughs> you know, barely. Yeah, their yeah. Maseroth is supposed to be better live than we are on the album every fucking time. And uh, I really hope that, you know, when people listen to the product that we create, that if they don't like it, they remember how much they don't like it. Yes. And if they do like it, they know where to find it. I'm always trying to invoke a response or a feeling from somebody when I release. When we make samples or new music, it's always to, I don't know, I think I'm always trying to touch on a chord, especially with our samples. I want them to be really difficult to listen to and unsettling. And uh, it paints a picture. Yeah, it's it's all the, the sample and the, you know, the environment and the atmosphere of, of a live show with Maserat is, it's all a finely tuned thing. It's all very intentional. I, you know what I feel kind of like you were talking about earlier, Tony, how you were saying how like, you know, the music can't really represent itself unless you find some everybody else who buys in with with what's going on. And, and, and you know, like you guys are saying, every position has like a spark or a power to it. Is there is there like a way you guys have to like pump yourselves up before every show as far as like mentally? Because the thing is, it's like to be a consistent band where you're trying to do a performance every night, not, you're not, you're not always perfect in your head. You're always going through shit. And like, you know, I've watched your guys' show and it looks like everybody is, has to be bought in to the live show. You know, is that, is that Definitely. like something you guys always preach at practice? Like, Hey guys, like maybe we're having somebody feels like shit, somebody's sick, but we just got to pull through. Like, 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 well, what are you guys like? Like the thing is, is that I know a lot of bands that don't take performing the whole lot seriously, and, and and they brush away from the idea. And I always tell people like the best bands are the bands that like look like they all bought in to what they want to do. You know, when Maiden runs out there, they're all running out there. They all you could all you could tell they're all part of the same band. You know, yeah, and with Mandaras, when you guys come out, you can tell you guys are all part of the same project, and you guys uh, really give a shit. Is there like a, a mental thing you had to do with this band to like be like, all right, guys, let's we have to try something like this? It goes all the way down to who we decide to bring in as members. You know, it goes all the way down to their personality. You know, it's what they bring to the band and everybody is formidable in their own way and should be a force to be reckoned with in their own way. And uh, that brings the energy to the music and to the live performance. You know, that feeling, that attitude, you know, we're all going through our own, you know, whatever, every single day. So we you know, try to just bring that and funnel and channel it into the anger and the feeling that we're trying to portray through our music. So, I think a big part of our live performance is um, it's natural to us. Uh, and in the moment, it's we're not necessarily trying to anything uh, so much as we are allowing ourselves to be in a way that everybody can watch. And I think that we really want to leave a fucking mark when we start telling people and when people see what Maseroth does, even if they don't like it, they remember it. I mean, in Air three years ago, when we played Erebus, we threw almost three gallons of blood into the crowd. There was organs everywhere. People who didn't know they were about to be at essentially like a Guar concert definitely got showered with blood and they weren't happy about it, but I'm fine with that. I guarantee, <laughs> I fucking guarantee you they remember it. <laughs> Everyone. So, so what you're trying to say is that after this interview, we should get together so that way I can buy like 20 raincoats for the 20 people that are going to be front row for you guys. That might be uh, you, you bring your white t-shirts and your brown pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, for everybody listening, we're, we're talking to Tony and Ian from Maserati, dude. Yeah, no, I, I I love it, dude, and um, I love that whole direction. Um, I've been listening to all sorts of music my whole life, dude. But I mean, I think the darkest I ever got was like, 
uh, Demi Borger back in the day, and and maybe Everybody some guy in Venus, you yeah. know. But but I remember like I did have one point in my life where I said uh, on my backpack I wrote uh, I chose the devil's path, <laughs> and, uh, and, and I did have my six six in 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 uh, pentagram phase as a kid. Did you guys have phases like that? Uh, I, you know, for I can only really speak for me myself and Ian, but that was never a phase for us. It was, <laughs> if I could still be rocking like four inch spikes, gauntlets on my arms, and wearing a trench coat everywhere, and people would still sell me work that provided for my family, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm doing. And by not being a phase, I mean that like that's just how it's always been, man. Like, uh, you know, not the beliefs aside, hail Satan. <laughs> <Fucking> <laughs> So did so did um so how's uh the scene over there for you guys a stylistic of music man like is is there is there a huge scene for like what what if, if you could describe your guys themselves like in a paragraph like how would you describe your sound to like people who are first listening to you guys? Uh, I would just tell them uh, for fans of devourment, uh, short bus pile up stages of decomposition. Um, I think those three bands, there's there's several. Our guttural slug, I could keep going. Lord Gore. Lord Gore. Uh, you know, it's for fans of that style of music, you know, it's very um sloppy. I don't know. There's a there's a it's, beauty in it's the got a, a grimy feel to it that just uh you don't find a lot. Everything today is really refined and polished. Polished, yeah. There's pro tools all over it. People are paying perfect arpeggios and there's nothing wrong with arpeggios don't get me wrong i love necrophagists and all that just as much as everybody else but i i really feel like the the soul of music is the expression like you can feel that's a real human being and a human being is imperfect and uh bands like lorna shore and and all those uh new like brutal acts are doing a great job and i don't discredit them at all but they're refined to a point that's uh, almost inhuman. It's like a computer and it's lost all of the grit that metal used to have and become like this almost pretty thing that it's I like still me. listen to, but is uh, not what I make. <laughs> hey, you know, gen hey, generations are gnarly, dude. And, and one of the things I always recommend is like, if you want to see like a lot of differences of guitar players at the Herman Lee po podcast, Oh, on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. and the thing is is that dude he brings a lot of modern guitarists that don't know how to jam freely yeah right yeah they're phenomenal and, 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 technicians and, 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 but... yeah yeah exactly and and i mean i remember um, i don't want to name drop but there's a couple like like people that are considered like some of the best in the world of like all these new styles and tapping styles and yeah. and, and, and 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 they couldn't stand, they couldn't uh play 30 seconds with herman herman sure. herman played yeah. circles because like back in the day, there, like uh, there's that generation of Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, you know what I mean, and, and all them. Yeah, and virtuosos yeah. where like you were saying, uh, people play with a lot of feel, right? Yeah. And, and nowadays, since everything is like you're saying, so layered and so production and all that, there is less and less emotion coming out of music because because when you have to do a hundred takes to do a great take, it emotionally drains you out. But right. now that but now that you could do three takes edit um, a third off of each take, put them together, and then, and, then, <laughs> yeah. and, 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 then, and then copy and paste them three times for choruses or verses, it takes away the passion of you actually sitting behind the mic and be like, damn it, I need one more, guys. Well, like, that you takes, know, away all, it, it, takes away all the human from it, you know? Yeah, instead of, instead of like the producer being like, no, fix it. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah, throw it through Pro Tools, uh, trigger it, put it out. If there's one thing I'm proud of about the music we've released, because it's not all as great as everybody in the band wanted it to be when it was recorded. I do some tribulations with that shit. I can tell you now. <laughs> I genuinely feel like, uh, you know, the thing to take pride in about those releases is that they're natural and raw. Like every single vocal track is a single vocal track, except for our very first demo. There's like two songs where there's a couple of backup vocals, but all of my voices, no effects, absolutely raw like one track no layers and no reverb and none of that shit everybody in metal today that makes the kind of stuff that would be comparable to my sound i think is really relying on multiple layers of their own voice and uh it sounds bitching but i do it by myself <laughs> that's where that soul and that grit comes man we're actually making the noise it's not 
I guarantee you not a single thing we write is on Pro Tools or, <laughs> I mean, with the exception of our basis, it's nothing's tabbed out or written out or noted out anywhere. Uh, I make our samples on my computer at night, you know, <laughs> like on Reefer and YouTube. So like, Damn. you know, it's a, it's, it's a labor of love and, you know, it's uh, something we're all passionate about. And everybody in this band is a different part of that motor, that engine that Maserath is, you know, we're all, we're like the five fingers in the fist, you know? <laughs> well, yeah. our, our new, oh, no, uh, Oh, Our ahead. new material is going to a level that's like surpassing everything we've put out, I feel like, because we've kind of gotten to this point. We, we've got a new drummer, a second guitarist for the first time and a new bassist all in the last year. Um, and those those additions to the band are really starting to come to form. And I think that like Maseroth is about to bring something to the table that even Maseroth fans aren't ready for. Yeah, we're still kind of struggling ourselves to see the whole picture of what we're about to to try to. I don't know. I don't want to be like delusions of grandeur, but here we are, man. Like I'm not trying right. to hype it up or nothing. I'm just saying that we're, <laughs> we're doing some stuff right now, and uh, I'm really excited to see it come to fruition because every member that joined the band in the last year started as a fan of the band. And the that heart and uh, general appreciation for what we are doing shows. Yeah, I can tell her that our drummer Eldon is still stoked. Hey, tell us the rest of your band members. Okay, so we've got Eldon Hutchins. Um, let's see, what's his name? Uh, Butcher. <laughs> Butcher, yeah, we'll see. Come we got, on, big we guy. Got, so we got pseudonyms, man. So, <laughs> so Butcher, Eldon Hutchins is our drummer. He's also in a, a side project with myself and our friend Cameron. Yeah, it's called Diseased and Depraved. That's and, some heavy shit. And uh, you can look for a full length of that later this year, hopefully. I think we're going to release later this year. Um, then we have Chris, uh, also known as Scours, Old Man Scours on bass. He's uh, honestly probably one of the best musicians I've had the, the privilege of working with. The guy is... He's far better than both of us. He's far better. Than, <laughs> he's better than we deserve, honestly. And uh, he's almost wasted. <laughs> <laughs> wasted on this project but but i love him and, and i'm glad that he's in our in our band and he loves to play it so it all works out yeah he's a great guy he's the one that actually tabs our shit out so now we actually have tablature if it weren't for chris we'd all forget our yeah he's, he's, like, <laughs> he's he knows theory and stuff i don't know man and then uh we have the latest edition ryan hansen um known as rot on second guitar um i don't know lead i don't know he and i kind of go back and forth on our leads so I feel like we're it's kind of garbage. weird. We're all just garbage ass guitarists here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tony, Tony and I have written most of the songs. We're just uh, we're just getting to the point where we're writing completely new material. We're still kind of using up stuff that Maseroff has had written but hasn't been able to produce. And uh, it's it's because of the additions to the band that's being refined in a way that I think is coming out really well. Yeah, there's little tweaks and changes to our sound. We're, we're retaining all the heaviness and speed and, you know, aggression. There's just a new layer of, uh, another layer of guitars, more technicality. Um, we're approaching more dynamic sound. Yes, mm -hmm. we're approaching more uh, techniques we know we didn't really use before. So, you know, limitations and whatnot are, are, are being suppressed. So we're, we're improving as a band and I'm really looking forward to the next year, the lineup. Dude, and dude, we're so looking forward to you having you guys in Southern Oregon, dude. And you guys, you guys are going to crush so hard, dude. And we're, we're going to bring the pits, dude. And it's going to get nasty, dude. So well, yeah, dude. Mind, everybody, we're talking to Tony and Ian from Maseroth. So before we end the interview, I'm just going to ask you guys a bunch of fun questions. You guys down for that? Oh, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay, um, I'm, we'll, we'll start left to right, all right? We'll start off with Tony. Tony, if you could choose your death, but it had to be by a serial killer, who would you choose to kill you, and how would they do it? Are we talking real serial killers or fictional? Anybody. Anybody. Well, uh, my personal favorite serial killer is Dennis Nilsson, and he was famous for uh, killing and chopping up the bodies and then boiling them and flushing them down the toilet to get rid of them. And uh, he also did molesty things. He, he did rape and eat <laughs> and store multiple dead boys and young men. But 
that's neither here nor, <laughs> nor here. So, <laughs> but I guess, uh, I don't know. Being drugged and strangled to death and then, or possibly drowned, it seems less bad than some other ways you could go. <laughs> well, well, same question, Ian. Um, well, it's, it's hard for me because my favorite serial killers were always so insane that it's like their motives were on them. Or, yeah. <laughs> I, I think if I was going to be killed by a serial killer, I would probably want it to be, um, Leatherface. Mm. Like it. Yeah, you, you can wear your face later. Be, because, mostly because uh, there would be trophies of me somewhere. Or But his trophies are different. I like it. I like it. All right. All right, Ian. Uh, we're going to start with you, man. Who is the one, one artist or band that you listen to the most that is the most opposite of what your band is? The most opposite of what my band is. Um, it's like all we listen to. Oh, <laughs> uh, there's got to be I, something you can't admit to your boy. Can, I, can I give you like two? Sure. All right. So, um, I I listen to a lot of Hank Williams from the fifties. Mm, oh okay. yeah. Um, and I listen to probably something that's the opposite so wraith night is like a <laughs> synth nice. project that uh the keyboardist from ceremonial castings and the bassist from um not fuck mysticism mysticism black nick superchi that guy is a genius and that, absolute that genius. if you have time to listen to some epic fucking video game music you should definitely give that a listen <laughs> tony same question dude oh man um <laughs> let's see the most opposite of my band music that i listen to yeah oh geez <laughs> ink spots is a pretty good one uh, <laughs> well ian and i both uh, work together and spend a lot of time on spotify listening to stuff that I don't know. It rotates pretty, pretty, pretty often. I think but, we went through 1,022 genres this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Um, Childish Gambino. Cool. Awesome. He's awesome. Yeah, I yeah. love him. He's a great guy. Yeah, the, the Danny Glover's son. Yeah. Yeah, I love Danny I Glover. I did not too. know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Danny Glover's son. Yeah, uh, uh, Lethal oh, Weapon, Gone Fishing with uh, Joe Pesci. Oh, uh, that's uh, yeah, that's clever, huh, Danny? And then there's Danny Donald. Danny. Donald oh, was, Donald, uh, yeah. He was yeah. Lando in the in the solo uh, movie. Yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. All right, uh, let's <laughs> see. We'll we'll start off with. Uh, well, what was the Tony second half? Oh, what's up? Was there a second half to that question? I don't remember. No, I, think that, I, I think feel like you answered it. it. All right, we're. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Um. We'll talk to Tony. Uh, well, so we'll get both of you guys is in a in a. I know we can go super long on this topic, so we'll just do it briefly. But um, are, are you guys stoked about uh, uh, Charles and Zach uh, joining uh, Pantera and doing the reunion show? Like, what are you guys' thoughts? Uh, watching? Have you guys watched any videos, by the way? Okay, the so both of us are uh, admittedly pretty big Pantera fans. Dime's literally the reason I picked up a guitar at eleven years old. Like. Okay. And uh, so, of course, he and I both heard when they started announcing that the Pantera, Pantera was going to reform and tour. He was pretty skeptical at first, but I was like, man, if it's not Zach, I don't want to even fucking hear about it. <laughs> because in my mind, and in, I'm sure in a lot of people, a lot of Pantera fans' minds, people that actually know Dimebag Daryl and knew about him or of him in any way, know that Zach Wild is the closest fucking thing we're ever going to have to Dimebag Daryl, you know, walking right now. Yeah. And, uh, Nobody else deserves that that spot more than Zach, and I think Dimebag himself would agree. As yeah, far as uh, what's he from? Is he from Exodus? I don't know. Uh, Charlie, the, the drummer. He's from Anthrax. Anthrax. Yeah. Charlie. Yeah. Charlie. Yeah. Charlie's a great musician. I'm not. 
I really respect what Anthrax did for metal because it's like there's if you really respect and listen to Anthrax's discography, you can recognize how much of that sound was influential to other metal. Mm -hmm. uh, but Anthrax has never been huge in my rotation. I don't really know his technique well enough to have enough respect for him, but I don't denote his ability and I trust the other members of the band and Zach Wilde's opinion of, you know, if anybody on that stage was still good friends with Vinnie Paul and Dimebag Daryl, it was Zach Wilde. And if he approves, then I feel like it's fair. Yeah, I think it's Zach's blessings. It's a done deal, brother. That's <laughs> and also, dude, Phil's, uh, Phil sobered up, dude, and, and his stage performance is like epic he's doing such a great job being like responsible like Dude, phil, uh, is, phil is a huge influence on my stage performance and if you watch like interviews with him from the 90s like his biggest thing was like when we're on stage it's time to go it's like i'm gonna break my neck because yeah. it's time <laughs> like we're gonna do this so hard i'll be like there's an interview where he's like i'll be doing nude stage dives <laughs> off the front <laughs> stage like I mean, that's that's where it should be. That's how every performance from Maseroth is, is we bring it to the table because that's what people paid for. And that's what we'd want to see if we came. So it's a whole meal deal, man. Dude, I love it. Ian, Tony, I appreciate you guys for spending time with me, dude. Um, I can't wait to have you guys on Medford Metal Fest April 15th, dude. Uh, dude it's going to crush so hard. I can't wait to see you guys. Um, um, last thing, uh, tell all, all the fans around in Oregon where they could find you. Hey, we are available on Instagram. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, YouTube, YouTube Music, and all that. We're on all the radio, all the uh, major streaming um, services. And uh, let's see, on Facebook, that's our primary. That and Instagram, you can reach us. It's Instagram is uh, Maserath underscore official. And There's a few of profiles because somebody hacked one of our first, uh, yeah. but the underscore official is the only one we actually still have access. To. You'll you'll see it in the bio on the page. It, it says it's the only official one. Oh, and then okay. Facebook, it's Facebook's backslash Maseroth one. And uh, yeah. feel free to send us death threats or hate mail or love or whatever. You know, <laughs> we don't care. We are super excited to be in Medford with you guys. Fucking, I hope that everybody comes and gets covered in blood. And uh, will. <laughs> we're, we're gonna bring a level that you guys probably aren't ready for. I... We don't get away with it much, but we're gonna do our best. Outdoors means mess. <laughs> you know what? I think I have. I know you're gonna bring it, man, because. Amy was like Maseroth like immediately. Bam. Yeah, we are Amy. Uh, much love to Amy. She's awesome. Yeah, big awesome. shout out to her. Thanks for connecting yeah. us. It's uh, to all you people out there. Awesome. If you haven't listened to Solicitor, you need to get out there and, and fuck with some Solicitor. All for right, real. Anthony, <laughs> much love to you guys. We've been listening to Maseroth on the Metal Mixtape. You have a good night. Oh yeah, man. Feel safe. Feel safe.